Well, the writer's strike hit, and they only had eight episodes left in film. They had eight of the planned 16. They had been gone for eight months. They were coming back an hour later than they had been, so the decision was made, we're going to roll the dice, we're going to give you the eight episodes that we have and pray the writer's strike is settled because we don't want to be gone for a year, year and a half and worry about our audience. Especially on a show where the complicated story changes every week. So they came back, fortunately, about two weeks into the, the new episodes, the strike was settled, so they were able to run the eight episodes, take like a four, uh, take, I think it was like a six week hiatus. They said mainly there were some supporting characters that were, be, that were introduced. We were going to give them backstory, and we shaved out some of the backstory and got them the central parts. They're coming back with two new seasons. The show was completely re-energized last year. Everybody, there are those that say last year was the best of the four. They've set, you know, it, as always, so many of the classic moments like you used to get with Babylon 5. When the show ended, your jaw would be wide open and you go, oh my god, can't wait till the next episode. How are they going to do that? always ending the season with one massive cliffhanger after another. That being said, there apparently there's talk that they may even consider doing a movie. There's there's talk that they may, you know, there, there, there's a lot of talk with that 24 because the thought is these shows are dark, mature shows. They are moving to areas that, while groundbreaking for television, they are getting to points where controversy is going to hit. There are some saying that to properly resolve what they need to resolve, they need to have the freedom of being able to be a little darker than they have traditionally been on television. Now, usually Fox is pretty lenient with what they where they let 24 go. Lost, for the most part. See, that's the thing you have to remember about Lost. ABC, good network, doing really well. But remember who owns the owns Disney. Uh, Disney owns ABC. So there is still that whole point of, we don't have a problem providing adult-themed entertainment, such as Desperate Housewives, but there's a limit. And so these, these are other things. That's where they, they balance this, because there are studios saying, well, heck, we can end the shows, all of the X-Files, and every three years or so, if all goes well, we can throw out a movie and keep the series going. That way, we don't have the problem of, you know what, my Fable on Five, they didn't, they told the story, but there's at least 10 or 15 plot threads that never got resolved. Yeah. You know, what happened with Lanier? We don't know. You know, what happened with Ivana and her, her thing? We know that she was there for the finale and all that and so on. All sorts of things. What exactly happened to Sheridan? You know, what happened to his son? We, we know from the books what happened to Londo and all that, but what happened to Vera and the Centauri? What happened to Jakar? Well, we know Jakar dies, but what happens with his... Legacy, you know, what exactly was on the Borland homeworld? Do the humans ever see that? So many things that they... So many other questions. Yeah. Did the shadows and Borlons ever return? How many of them were beyond the, you know, how many of the first ones went beyond the veil and what happened to them? These are all things that are said. The telepath war, never touched, always planned on. I understood that, that, the, that the ratings were falling and they decided to just take the last season and make it one show. Yeah, basically what happened, are you referring to Babylon 5? Babylon 5, yeah. What happened was, because it was in syndication, it was playing all over the place. And there were some times in some markets it was on at 2 in the morning and you'd have to have a certain cable company to get it and so on yeah. and so forth. And Straczynski was getting very concerned that he wasn't going to be able to finish his story. And what happened was TBS came to him and they were cutting the deal for the, for the, the two hour movies, the series of them. And they said, bring your fifth season to us and we'll let you do it. Well, what had happened though was he had already was concerned that's where they were heading. Into the fourth season, he sat down and said, okay, how can I, if I have to tie all this up this year, how can I do it and cover the most important things that I need to cover up? He went through it all, he did all of it, and he even went so far as to shoot the final episode and said, okay, that's it, I think we've got it covered. Then the fifth series, then the offer came for the fifth season. So they went and did the fifth season and they started to open up new lines they had the finale, and then of course it was, hey, this is doing great, the TV movies are doing great, let's do Crusade. They did Crusade, which, you know, the sad thing about it is, I found where Crusade was supposed to go. And it was, it was a, I think Crusade would have been even better than Babylon 5 given time. Because they had a real ingenious twist sitting there for that. So isn't Crusade part of Babylon 5? Right, but it was the spin-off series. 
and the studio stopped it because they said it was not the show that was originally planned. They wanted more sex, more violence. What was originally going to happen, they had three episodes, they had three or four other episodes planned for it. What was going to happen was that we were going to discover that the, the ship that killed Gideon's original crew was indeed a shadow hybrid. They come across it later. And it was going to open up a whole can of worms that was going to set the thing. The gist of it was there was a secret Earth installation using shadow technology for these, these horrific things. The Excalibur was not allowed to go there, even though they were given pure jurisdiction over all the sentient races of the galaxy to go anywhere they needed to for a cure. We were then going to find out that the Technomages were all powered by shadow technology. In essence, they made a deal with the devil a thousand years ago. We're going to give you this technology, you create the people, just remember if we come back and say it's time to serve, time to serve. They knew this, knowing it would be the, ex the end of their people, and when the shadows came, they decided to run and hide, rather than get involved, even though without any new technology, that was the end of it. Gideon was the, I mean, Galen was the one that said, no, nah, I'm going to change it up here. He's powered by shadow technology. That's their big, deep, deep dark secret. Every last one of them were designed to be weapons you to to serve the shadows. And so the big twist was going to be that Gideon was going to tell the truth. He was going to tell the whole world about it. And there was going to be a big conference on Babylon 5. And right, the season one was going to end with him getting shot by an assassin right as he was about to open his mouth and talk the thing out. Season two was going to have a really interesting twist where his apocalypse box basically captured his soul and the two of them were sharing it. We were going to learn exactly what that thing was and why Everybody who owned it was so happy to be rid of it and then died soon after. He, of course, would make a return, but what they were going to do, it was going to be a very interesting twist. They were going to find the cure for the plague early, midway, early into the second season, and that would be it. But like True Babylon 5, what you think? Remember the first show, first season, first show, we thought the whole in Sinclair's mind was going to be the big mystery of the series. They answered that in the first episode of season two. And so the big thing, the Shadow Plague, was not going to be what drove the series. That was going to be resolved very early in Season 2. What it was going to be was the conspiracy that Gideon uncovered with the Shadow technology, that those that crew the Excalibur go from being the saviors of the universe, saviors of Earth, to the most wanted individuals in the galaxy. Because they end up being framed and blackballed for what they know about the Shadow conspiracy and they become the most hunted people because they will they need to stop them at all cost to keep them from telling what they know. And then of course other things would spin from that. So so I've got some more time. I know some of you have other panelists um, to get to, but just out of curiosity, is there uh, uh, anything on, on heroes? I know I kind of dropped that. Yeah, heroes, uh, good versus evil coming back in the fall. They've said that you will be much happier with this. It will be much more... I personally think Heroes has really fallen off since they... It was, I thought, up to the point where that Save the Cheerleader, Save the World storyline, yeah. which was absolutely brilliant. I think once that was resolved, it's really been coasting since then. Supposedly, they're doing much better. They're, gonna, they're just really drawing lines in this one. These are the good guys, these are the bad guys, and a battle royale is brilliant. And apparently they're really going to up the intensity, they're going to up the action, and, you know. Yeah, it's basically, it's been, it's, so far it's been like a soap opera with powers. Right. Over the Avatar, James Cameron's good film. You'll be hearing a lot about it in, in the, probably about six months' time, I believe. If all goes well, they're hoping to have it out by next summer, but it could be delayed because it's supposed to be the most... There are those that are saying it will be the most expensive and most visually extravagant film ever attempted. Cameron is a true perfectionist. It will not come out until he's satisfied with it. And so, you know, that's what we got. Yes? Uh, IMDB has a release date of December 18, 2009. Yeah. That's what they've said is the thought, but I've been told by a lot of people that could change. It could be moved into, to, I mean, literally, it's the old, the studio's coming out and picking a date late in, late in 09 for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've been told that could change. It all depends on how they, you know, the, one, the actor strike, although most of the principal photographers done, and secondly, how the, um, you know, the effects and the post effects and all of that, you know. But yeah, I think that's a pretty safe bet right there.